morning and a very warm welcome to our worship, our Eucharist for Advent Sunday. On this Advent Sunday we light the first of our Advent candles. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, God of our ancestors, to you be praise and glory forever. You called the patriarchs to live by the light of faith and to journey in the hope of your promised fulfilment. May we be obedient to your call and be ready and watchful to receive your Christ, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. For you are our light and our salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. forever. Lord Jesus, light of the world, born in David's city of Bethlehem, born like him to be a king, be born in our hearts at Christmas, be king of our lives today. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Forgive 
us all which is past, and grant we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Collect for Advent Sunday. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty, to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit now for our Bible readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from Isaiah, chapter 64, beginning at the first verse. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversities, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, and the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned because you hid yourself, we were transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean. And all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind. Just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second hymn, Hark sound and too divine for hearing.
Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the end of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come, because it is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands a doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. What I say to you, I say to you all, keep awake. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. May I speak and may we all hear in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please sit down. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. This year, I find myself looking at passages from the Bible in quite a different way, as do other preachers, so it seems. A theologian, Anna Carter Florence, reflecting on preaching in the pandemic writes, was I wearing a face mask and gloves the last time I read this? How else could I have walked right by that detail and never picked it up? Today's Gospel reading is a good case in point. When I've read and preached on this passage these last 33 years, I would have said a lot, probably, about the Second Coming, the need to remain vigilant, Yet what now do words like summer and stay alert mean to us at the moment? For summer we probably think of normality with the fig leaves standing for the soon to be ready vaccines. As for stay alert, we've been used to this for many months now in relation to the threat of coronavirus. The Prime Minister has confirmed this in his own unique style by speaking of Christmas 2020 as a season to be jolly careful, while at the same time craning our ears to hear the sound of the approaching vaccine cavalry. Today is Advent Sunday. We miss an important truth if we see Advent as merely the run-up to Christmas with a chocolate behind every window. Advent means coming, but well, the thing that's coming is so much more than Christmas. When the early Christians, remembering Jesus' words, spoke of him coming on the clouds after the stars had fallen from heaven, it would have symbolized great hope. They lived in momentous times which must have seemed like the end of an era with the great temple in Jerusalem destroyed by the Romans in AD 70. Into this destruction comes 
the hope of Jesus' second coming. Some of them fixated on this to the extent of giving up normal living and day-to-day -day work. Yet what did Jesus say? Not, I will come on this day, so get ready for it. Indeed, he says, of that hour no one knows. He did say, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. We too live in times of great global insecurity, fear and depression, with even the joy of Christmas greatly flattened by the regulations and fear of the virus. There is a danger that we too can write off anything of importance happening in our lives over the next few months, plan holidays, book tickets, arrange get-togethers, live for the summer. Yet what a shame it would be if we missed God's coming to us now by doing one or, or both of two things. First, by missing the now, missing, for example, the beautiful autumnal sunsets and other graces, which remind us of God's ever-present reality with us. And secondly, by failing to hear the voices of need which surround us here and now. We must indeed keep alert, alert not to the, just to the ever-present threat of the virus, which can come to us like a thief in the night, but alert to God's presence and the work he has prepared for us to do, even while waiting for life to return to normal for life with God is never normal, and never the same as it was last year, for God is always renewing our life. Heaven and earth shall pass away, said Jesus, but my words will never pass away. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. We stand now for the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son comes together to worship and glory, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one matters for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Lord, be known in your church. For without you we have no message, we have no power. Come, fill us with your presence, that we may proclaim your peace. Lord, make us aware, alert to your coming, that we may reveal your glory in all the world. We pray for those that walk in darkness, whose faith is uncertain, that they may see your light. We remember those whose lives are clouded with troubles and pray that they may behold your glory. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Come, Lord, and give peace to your world. Disperse the clouds of war and violence, of calamity and disaster. Let your power and your glory be revealed to the nations. We pray for all those who work to relieve the physical and mental anguish caused by this present pandemic. For all those working to produce a vaccine to help us to fight it. We pray for all who watch and wait while we sleep. For the police, hospital workers and ambulance workers for firefighters and for all who work in the dark hours of the night. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, be known in our homes, that our homes may reflect your love. Come in our workplaces, that they may reflect your glory, that we may rejoice in each other's presence, that we may be fully aware of others and sensitive to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, to all who are unable to cope at this time, to all who are weighted down with difficulties. We pray for all those who are ill and for those who care for them. We remember all our friends and loved ones who we hold on our hearts at this time. Among them we pray for Mark and Mary and Molly. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord of our salvation, save us and we shall be saved. We pray for friends and loved ones departed especially for those who have died recently and for those whose anniversary of death falls this time of year. May they now rejoice in the fullness of your presence and your glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come, Lord, come down, come in, come among us. Enter into our darkness with your light. Come fill our emptiness with your presence. Dispel the clouds and reveal your glory. Come, refresh, renew, restore us. Come Lord, come down, come in, come among us. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. To crown all things there must be love. To bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And the Lord with you. We give thanks for these gifts of bread and wine. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendour and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come upon you, and of your own do we give you. salvation 
confident that your promise will be fulfilled, we now watch for the day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing.
Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be. arrangements uh, for churches opening again on the 6th. The three churches will be opening for morning services that day and in the afternoon of the 6th at 3 o'clock there is nine lessons and carols at St Boniface. The following Sunday the 13th there is services in the morning at St Catherine's and St Boniface but not at Holy Trinity. At Holy Trinity at five o'clock there will be an evening communion with carols for Gaudete Sunday. On the 20th, there will be services at Holy Trinity. There is a carol service at St. Catherine's in the afternoon. 
For Midnight Mass, Holy Trinity, it is a ticketed event because of the restriction on numbers. The tickets will be available at church on the morning of the 6th, the afternoon of the 13th, and the morning of the 20th. You will need a ticket as we are limited to 40 at Midnight Mass. Thank you. Our final hymn, Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending. Thank you. 